Hello and welcome to Media Focus. In this video, we are going to be looking at how to discuss the representation of black and minority ethnic people. This is a topic which many media students quite naturally maybe don't want to discuss in any particular detail. Maybe they don't want to be seen as being racist, for example, uh, so it can be quite tricky to discuss. However, this is a topic that we absolutely need to discuss, and there are many, many, many important points to point out in pretty much every single last text that we look at in A-level media studies. So in order to do this, I am going to be going through three different theories, uh, four actually, um, and we're going to be looking at how useful these are when it comes to discussing the representation of black and minority ethnic groups. Um, I'm using the phrase black and minority ethnic. It is a catch-all term for essentially anybody who isn't white. And already this is raising quite an important issue when it comes to the analysis of media products, which we will discuss when we discuss the concept of othering. First of all, though, since we're discussing representation, it would be really important to just point out what representation is and why it is so important. So first of all, representation is a representation. Representation is not showing something, but it is showing something again. And it is where the producer will show something again. Representation can be a representation of a group in society, for example, black and minority ethnic people. It can also be a representation of a place, or it can be a representation of an issue or event. So this is something which is really important to consider. Everything we see or hear in a media product is essentially not real. It is always a representation. And this applies to everything from TV shows and music videos, but also to things like newspapers and news broadcasts as well. Everything is a representation by the producer. So why is representation so important? Why do we actually care? Well, the biggest reason is that representation constructs reality. When we watch a media product and we see a black person or a gay person or a Welsh person or a certain event, what we are seeing is not the actual group or issue or event, but we are seeing a reconstruction based on the ideological perspectives of the producer. This has many implications, especially if the producer, for example, doesn't share the ethnicity of the person being represented, but quite frankly, even if they do as well. There are also considerations that we need to think about in terms of the socio-historical context of when uh, representations are encoded. For example, when we looked at the Tide advert, uh, that was created during the 1950s, and that's a very different representation of women than we might be used to seeing in modern uh, adverts, uh, even detergent adverts as well. So we need to consider that representations are a reconstruction of reality and that they change over time as well. So let's look at a few theories which are going to help us to discuss specifically the representation of black and minority ethnic people. So first of all, though, getting ahead of myself, how do we actually talk about representation in the exam? If we were writing a paragraph, then how should we structure that? Well, first of all, we need to remember that you need to structure your paragraph as P-E-A or P-E-E. -E. So point, evidence, explanation, point, evidence, analysis, point, evidence, argument. It doesn't actually really matter. Some teachers like Pete or Peel or something like that. For me, it's much, much better to keep things simple. It's point, evidence, I like argument. But anyway, so in your point, you need to point out which group is actually being represented. And if you point this out at the beginning of the paragraph, then you're communicating with your teacher or the examiner exactly what you're talking about in that paragraph. It also helps you to stay on track as well. 
straight after you point out who's being represented, for example, black teenage boys, for example, you need to talk about exactly how this representation is constructed using media language. So things like shot type, setting, mise-en-scene, editing, colour, uh, sound, and so on. As long as you're talking about this, then you are doing media studies. So every time we see somebody or something on screen, that thing or person or issue or event or whatever is being constructed through media language. And yeah, third point in your paragraph, what ideological perspective or message is constructed? Now, every time we see somebody, for example, a black or minority ethnic person, for example, in a music video, a message is being constructed by the producer. So what is the producer's ideological perspective? What messages and values is the producer encoding about this issue, event, or group of people? You need to point this out and you need to be quite forceful with this. If you have an inclination as to what the producer is pointing out, you need to state it in your paragraph. So this is really, really important because you need to acknowledge that every producer will have an ideological perspective. But even more important, and this is what I like to call the A-grade part of the paragraph, you need to point out how this ideological perspective will impact the group who are actually being represented. So it's all very well and good to say, okay, this is a negative representation of gay people. This is a stereotypical representation of Latina women. Okay. However, what impact is this representation actually going to have on that group in society? Is it going to reinforce a stereotype? Is it going to cultivate ideological expectations about that group in society? And one theorist who looked at these ideological expectations of black and minority ethnic groups in society was the sociologist Manuel Alvarado. And he looked at this idea of racial stereotypes and their functions. And Alvarado pointed out that there are four major racial stereotypes which crop up time and time again in media products, in news broadcasts, in whatever. So the first stereotype that we often see in media products is this idea of ethnic minorities as being pitied. So this idea that people of uh, ethnic minorities are uh, pathetic, that they are poor, that they are vulnerable, that they are weak, and most importantly, that they need to be helped by a hegemonically accepted white audience. Now, the most clear and obvious example of the pitied stereotype that we have seen in A-level media studies is in the WaterAid advert. So by and large, this is actually a fairly positive representation of African people. Um, but it, it also presents this idea of African people uh, and the advert never actually states what country it's set in. It is uh, Zambia, I think. Um, and this representation is extremely stereotypical. It is a representation of a young black woman as being confident, as being strong, and yet also being vulnerable of being poor and only being in the position that she is in her life thanks to the kindness of foreign white benefactors, so the target audience of this music, uh, of this advert. And we often see this pitied stereotype in other charity adverts as well. So previous WaterAid adverts, uh, we see stereotypical images of starving African people with the mise-en-scene of flies buzzing round eyes and things like that, which emphasise this idea that minority ethnic groups essentially cannot look after themselves and must be looked after instead by the charity of white working class and middle class people. The second stereotype that we often see in media products is that black and minority ethnic groups are dangerous, that they are threatening and that they are involved in crime. 
This is something that we often see in the crime genre. So one excellent example of this is the TV show Top Boy. Now, in many ways, Top Boy is actually a fairly robust and varied representation of uh, black crime in the UK. However, it still reinforces this idea that by and large, uh, young black men, especially impoverished inner city communities, etc., uh, are involved in crime. Now, if we were to just watch Top Boy by itself, that would be fine. We would kind of see it as an outlier. However, if we continue to see negative representations of black people, for example, again, another representation of black men being involved in crime, the film Straight Outta Compton with N.W.A., uh, their song Fuck the Police, etc. And this idea that black people are dangerous, that black people are threatening and generally involved in crime. And if we keep seeing media products like this, this reinforces uh, this and cultivates this ideology that by and large black and minority ethnic groups are predominantly involved in crime. Then a very different stereotype is the exotic stereotype. And when Alvarado refers to exotic, he generally means exotic in a sexualized sense. So quite often, black and minority ethnic groups will be represented in such a way that they are highly sexualized, that they are different from the sexualized representations of white people. A pretty extreme but excellent example of this is the video to Anaconda by Nicki Minaj, uh, where her body is emphasized in a series of often extreme close-ups, uh, and her blackness is emphasized by a series of mise-en-scene, for example, uh, jungle plants and bananas and things like that and her costume which emphasizes her stereotypical black appearance and also emphasizes this idea that black and minority ethnic women are exotic and sexually appealing um this idea might not seem too bad on the face of it however it is an example of sexual objectification this idea that a group in society only exists for the gratification of a patriarchal hegemonic male gaze. Uh, another excellent example of the exotic stereotype that we've looked at is in the TV show Humans with the character Anita, played by Gemma Chan, who is a stereotypically attractive and exotic East Asian woman who is literally bought by the Hawkins family, is taken in and then instantly becomes an object of lust for the son and for the father uh, who ends up using his patriarchal power in order to have sex with her. Uh, and she has no ability to either consent to this or to opt out of this. So obviously, humans is a fairly allegorical uh, discussion of the representation of, in this case, uh, East Asian women. Finally, we have the humorous stereotype. And this is a stereotype that we often naturally see in comedy films. For example, in the Lethal Weapon series, we see the straight white cop partnered with the funny black cop. In the film Beverly Hills Cop, we see the streetwise funny cop being placed into uh, a more stereotypical white setting. And there is much comedy which is produced from the binary opposition there. Um, and in the TV show, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, starring Will Smith, much of the comedy there comes from the idea of this streetwise black kid who is placed in a stereotypical white setting. So this idea of a comedic black sidekick is often emphasized in comedy shows and reinforces this idea that black and minority ethnic characters are essentially there to be laughed at uh, and can be funny and can be interesting and can even drive the narrative forward. Uh, but they are rarely the main character, which reinforces hegemonic norms and values about uh, the uh, hierarchical uh, status that white people take in society. So obviously what we're talking about right now is quite difficult. 
And what we're talking about right now can also be perceived as being fairly offensive. And when we discuss and when we think about black and minority ethnic characters as belonging in a stereotype, what we are and what the audience is doing and what the producer is doing and what hegemonic societal systems is doing is they are going through a system of othering. Now, this process of othering, so this is actually a psychoanalytic term, and this is the process of making something, it's the process of viewing something or someone who is not the same as being different and as being threatening. So this idea of the same and the other. And if a media product assumes that its audience is white, and consistently casts the main character as being a white person, then what this does is this others black and minority ethnic characters. So every time we see an exotic sexualized representation or a funny representation or a pitied representation, this cultivates and reinforces the idea in society that black and minority ethnic people are different. So someone who is not the same but is represented or perceived as being different, since from a hegemonic perspective many media products assume the audience to be white, straight men, examples of group who are routinely othered include young people, black people, gay people and women, so it is not just black and minority ethnic groups that um, we can apply this concept of othering to. Horror films are often an excellent example of othering, and often the threat or the villain uh, will be some group in society who is different, who is strange, who is something that we cannot comprehend. So that's something which is really, really important to consider. And Stuart Hall um, discussed this idea of othering through his representation theory. So in many ways, this is a fairly straightforward theory, although if you do get into Stuart Hall's work, you'll see that his ideas are anything but straightforward. And his uh, analysis of uh, discourse and his um, excellent explorations of Black British identity are definitely well worth checking out, especially if you want to go on to do media studies at university. So this comes down to the idea of stereotypes. And a stereotype is a widely held belief about a certain group in society. So stereotypes are, well, regardless of how we think about them, we all use them on a daily basis, no matter how much we might like to think we don't. And one group in society who really like to use stereotypes are media producers. And there's a number of reasons for this. Stereotypes can form an essential shortcut for media producers. They can tell the story quickly and easily, and they can get across to the audience exactly, on a really basic level, who is the good guy and who is the bad guy, the protagonist or the antagonist. So a stereotype doesn't just happen overnight but it needs to be repeated over and over again. And what this does is it cultivates an ideological perspective about a certain group in society. So, for example, you know, thinking about a TV show like Top Boy, which frankly is a great show and I really, really enjoy it. Um, however, it's quite rare to actually, I can't really think of a TV show or film or other media text off the top of my head about inner city black male uh, London youths, which isn't about crime, which is a huge issue of stereotyping. It's a huge issue of typecasting as well. And if we keep seeing young black men consistently in these situations, consistently in backdrops and settings which are associated with crime, what it does, according to Stuart Hall and many other theorists as well, is that it reinforces this idea that black and minority ethnic groups are associated with crime. And Hall goes on to discuss like where these stereotypes actually come from. They are reinforced by people who are in positions of power. TV shows, media products, any form of media basically comes from established hierarchical systems of power. And this creates strong ideas of hierarchies. So by consistently representing, for example, black uh, male um, 
uh, working class teenagers as being criminals. This reinforces this idea that they are lower on a hierarchy. And this basically represents this imbalance in society. So where we see these strong negative stereotypes about certain groups in society, this reinforces this idea that there is a hierarchy in society, that there is someone on top and that there is someone below as well. And the final theory that we're going to be talking about when discussing the representation of black and minority ethnic people is this idea of post-colonial theory, which can be attributed to Paul Gilroy. Now, post-colonialism comes naturally from this idea of colonialism. So thinking about the United Kingdom, the British Isles initially extended way beyond the coasts of our island, and uh, Great Britain, um, through coercion, uh, through force, uh, essentially um, occupied and colonised a number of countries, for example, India, for example, Australia and Hong Kong. Um, and, you know, this idea of this tiny island occupying so much of the world is extremely problematic. And it really emphasises this idea of there being an imbalance in society. When we think about the idea of colonialism, it raises some really, really important points. If you go to a country and say, your religion, yeah, that's not good enough. You now worship uh, the Christian God. Uh, your, you know, food, that's not good enough. You're now eating this instead. Um, you know, your ruler, they're not good enough. You now are ruled by, by our queen. This, of course, reinforces this idea that certain people are better than other people. Uh, and of course, you know, the, the biggest manifestation of this colonial identity is through the use of slavery, uh, which, of course, is an extremely explicit example of racial hierarchies. Um, and, you know, even the term race itself, as we will see when we look at formation, um, is a racist term. And it comes from this idea that white people and East Asian people and black people were actually different species, which is, of course, completely wrong uh, and obviously completely unpleasant. But it allows people, uh, we're allowed people to justify uh, racism in this sense, uh, although of course it can never be justified. So even though we live in a post-colonial society and many of these territories have been handed back uh, and, you know, might still, um, Paul Gilroy argues that we still have this mindset, this post-colonial mindset, this idea that the British Isles had conquered so many places, that, you know, the United Kingdom uh, has so much influence over the world even now. So this continues to shape contemporary attitudes to race and ethnicity in this post-colonial era. Um, and this continues to reinforce these high hierarchies uh, where essentially white people are continually in positions of power and black and minority ethnic people are lower in society as well. Um, and often Gilroy points out that binary oppositions are used to reinforce this idea that black and minority ethnic people are different and other and the opposite of the white main characters. So the four theories, the four ideas that we've looked at in today's session um, are going to be really, really useful when it comes to studying the video to Formation by Beyonce. 